All right. Welcome, everybody, to week two of our Believe You Can program. Um, so who has a, a takeaway that they had from last week that they want to share? Does anyone have anything that's just kind of resonated since last week with them? Jackie, go for it. Unmuting is key. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. Um, just like having a plan when you, when you figure out your schedule, like, cause mine right now is all over the place. I don't know when I'm working or where. So those little chunks of time that I have to plan exactly what I'm going to be doing. And like you had said, like brain dump everything that you do for your business and then prioritize the main things and then attack each task. So that definitely was like, ooh, good focus. Yeah, good deal. Anybody else? No. All right. Well, you know what's exciting for me? That every one of the you guys that are on here, I had a coaching call with this week, which that for me is super exciting because... Um, it shows me how focused that you guys are in actually taking 2021 and moving forward in a, in a forward direction, not a backward direction. Okay. So tonight we're going to talk about discipline and I'll tell you last week with the whole time management and goal setting, that is like one of your number one pillars of this business, but discipline also is like up there, right? It is absolutely something that will either enable you to move forward and be successful, or it will cripple you if you are not. So we're going to focus all about discipline tonight. Um, but we're going to start in a different direction and we'll, we're going to land the plane with discipline. Okay. So y'all stick with me here for a couple of minutes. All right. Let me play from current. Okay. All right, so let me kind of move this around. I hate it when my little camera thingy's all in the way. So, you know, our minds control us. Would you guys all agree that our minds have a huge impact in our belief, what we think, how we feel, um, whether we decide to do something or not? And so our minds, you can break that mind sound, mindset down into two different areas. Either you have a growth mindset or you have a fixed mindset. And there's a really big difference between the two of them. Um, on, the, on the heads are some examples of both. So let's just pull a couple of them out here. So if you're in a, in a growth mindset, you're a person that believes failure is an opportunity to grow, okay? Now that same person, if they were in a fixed mindset, what do you guys think that that person would believe? That failure is just failure, right? That you don't really learn anything from failure. but we know differently, right? Failure is actually just an opportunity to grow. It's a lesson that you can learn to help you not repeat the same mistakes, okay? So another example of growth mindset, challenges help me to grow, right? I mean, hence the word challenge, right? It's, it's meant to stretch you. It's meant to help you get outside of your comfort zone. Do you guys think that you can be successful in your comfort zone? No, right? Every bit of success that you're going to celebrate is always going to be when you start to stretch a little bit outside of that comfort zone. You know, it's kind of like the old, you know, saying about a pool, you know, are, how many of you guys just jump in? Who just jumps in the pool? You know that water's cold. Does anyone just jump in? A couple of you do. Okay. Who's the one that dips their toes in the water? Yeah, we got lots of toe dippers. I know. You know, in, in really, if you're a growth mindset, you're probably that person that jumps in. You are the one that goes full force, head in, don't care that shock is going to ring through you in 30 seconds and you're over and done with it, right? Where our tiptoers, we have to feel it out a little bit, you know, and let our body warm up inch by inch until you finally have to get the parts in that really matter. And then you still kind of ease your way down into it. If you're a fixed mindset person, you believe failure is the limit of your abilities, okay? And you would also, you know, kind of be that person that gives up when you're frustrated. So I challenge you guys to kind of look at that. Which person are you right now? Not who you're going to be. So drop it in the chat for me. Are you a growth mindset or are you a fixed mindset? When you look at those lists there.
I'm, I hid my chat bar. Let me see what we got. All right, so we got a growth mindset, a fixed mindset. Jackie is growth. Aaron Joy is growth. Mike is fixed. Mike, she called you out. <laughs> some days growth and some days fix. I like that. Yep, that one changes for me all the time too. Yep, fixed mindset. Perfect. And I think, you know, that's like step number one is to realize what personality that you are, what kind of mindset that you have in order to be able to really move forward. So you can't have discipline, okay, without changing what you believe. It's just not possible. So I know you guys have seen me or heard me talk about the belief triangle probably before. How many of you guys have heard me talk about the belief triangle? I know I talked with a couple of you guys on calls this week about the belief triangle. And so I had to like what the, put the wolf pack spin on it. So that's, it looks a little bit different than you've probably ever seen it before. But up at the top of the triangle, you guys see that that's your personal belief. Down at the lower right side, you see your personal actions. And then on the left side, you see your personal results. And that's because each one of those in a triangle affect each other. So I'm going to show you an example of what that would look like. So we believe nobody wants to host a show. Okay, that's at the top. So we think nobody wants to host a show. So our actions are, I don't send messages or I quit after I hear the word no. Our results become that we have no bookings, which then reinforces our thought that nobody wants to host a show. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, good. So let's flip the script a little bit. So let's think in our minds that people want to host a show with me. Even if at that moment you're like, Becky, I can't get a single person to host a show with me. When you keep telling yourself that, you guys, you're literally giving permission to start believing that and letting that drive your results. So you almost have to plant this little positivity script in your mind and trick it to think, you know what? People do want to host a show with me. So we call that like a positive affirmation, right? Because I truly believe that like the more you tell your something that self that you can't do something, your mind believes that you can't do it. But if you tell yourself that you can, your mind will also start to believe that as well. So let's go through this. People want to host a show with me. So my actions are that I send at least 30 to 50 messages a week. My results are that I have bookings and earn the consultant promo, which reinforces that people want to host a show with me. Okay, so one is automatically connected to the other. They each drive each other. They push each other. All right, so it's time to practice. Get out those pieces of paper I told you guys to have. And if you didn't see my post earlier, then just get out two pieces of paper. <clears throat> We're gonna do a little exercise here. So I want you guys to draw a triangle and I want you guys to fill out exactly what it says on this triangle. So at the top, I want you to write, I believe whatever it is, that you believe about your personal business right now? Do you believe your business is amazing? Do you believe your business is a struggle? Do you believe your business is testing your patience? <laughs> do you believe your business is exactly what you want it to be? What do you believe about your business? And then right now, what actions do you currently take in your business? So that'll be on your bottom right side. What actions do you take? Do you send messages? Do you make phone calls? Do you host coach? Do you kind of host coach? Do you kind of send messages? Because there's a difference between what will help you and what will hold you back, right? So if you are the kind of person that's really kind of you know, engage with it, you're sending those 30 to 50 messages a week until your calendar's full. And then you keep sending messages. But if you're kind of just not sure, then you're probably that person that's like, oh, I send messages, you know, when I have time. 
All right, so then let's talk about res what results do you get right now? What do your results look like? How many shows do you have on your calendar? How much are in sales did you do last month? That's gonna be your results. Now, if you look at that closely, you're probably gonna see that whatever you believe at the top has now determined what your actions are, which is also reinforcing your results and reaffirming your belief in your business. Does anyone wanna share what three that they have written down? Jackie, go for it. I said, I believe we are struggling in our business, getting it up and going again. And we have haphazardly like done messaging and host coaching. And we have a semi full schedule or month this month. So, okay. So. And so that's reaffirming that your business is kind of struggling, struggling, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Anybody else want to share what they wrote? I think Jackie and Mike copied off of mine. <laughs> no. I that is, I was gonna that is that exactly too. what I, I put. Um, I believe my business can be better. Okay. Um, what actions I, especially last month and it is an excuse, but um, with my um, full-time job of last, like the end of November, December with my full-time job taking kind of over my life for like 20 days. Um, I have sent out messages, I have host coached, and um, I didn't get the results that I wanted, um, my sales, bookings, and host coaching, so okay, that's why I could do better. But, you know, the thing I love about doing this exercise is it lets you see from a realistic standpoint where you are and why you're there, right? Who else wants to share? We have time for one more person. I'll share too, but mine sounds a lot like Jackie's because, and <laughs> our last speaker, because I believe that I'm, I'm struggling, but I've been sending out messages. I've been checking in with the person I signed up underneath. And I also had a call with you yeah. yesterday yeah. and I sent out 10 messages. Woo I got 10 no's. That's okay though. Cause no's get you one step closer to a yes, my friend. Every, even, every even follow up for no's. No's. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. And, and honestly, that's a lot of times when we experience all of those repeat no's, that's when up here in our mind, your mind starts to say, you can't do this. You're not getting results. Why are you doing this? You start questioning yourself. And that's where this belief triangle is going to come in so handy for you to help you stay focused and stay centered on what's the important things, okay? So Gail dropped in the chat. She says, I'm a, I believe my business is growing. I shared the opportunity with past hosts and I have a new consultant. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, so we're gonna have you do one more example, okay? So we're going to completely change what your current results are, okay? to be what your goals are and what you're willing to do to get there. So at the top, I want you to write what goal you're trying to reach. Is it director? Is it, you know, uh, an elite seller? Is it a trip? Is it um, a steady paycheck? Is it, I don't know, the next step for you, so maybe a senior consultant, if you're just a consultant. And then in the other corner, you're gonna write, what actions are you willing to take, okay? To help you reach that goal. So are you willing to stick to a schedule? Are you willing to commit more time? Are you willing to, I don't know, attend trainings? Are you willing to do a coaching call? Are you willing to send more messages? And then what results do you want? Be specific. How many shows do you want on your calendar a week? How many recruits do you want this month? How many sales do you want to submit this month?
And then when you guys get done, who wants to share? Well, Tom and I, um, we have a steady paycheck for the goal that we're trying to reach. Um, for the action, we want to do more coaching and be more consistent at the business. And we are results what we would we would like to have six parties a week. Okay. Awesome. And that would definitely help you, you know, achieve that steady paycheck, right? Yes. Like doing six shows a week, most mm -hmm. definitely. Who else, ha who else wants to share? Isn't this fun getting you guys thinking? Terry, go for it. Sorry, I was writing down. <clears throat> um, so I want to get the trip. I'd like to win a trip. Okay. Very much so. Um, and I would love to have consistent monthly income. And so I, I need to sit down with a schedule. So I need to schedule my work, plan my work, work my plan. Absolutely. Um, and contact people and con and do more customer follow-up <clears throat> wherever, wherever that falls, whatever I need to do as far as making sure that I'm always in front of people uh, working my business, whether it's a uh, recruiting or trying to book hosts or, or just get an individual um, order. The results that I want, I would really like to do, at least for right now, while I'm building $5,000 per month in sales, I'd like to recruit at least one to two people per month. Um, and try to build up to six to eight parties per week. Awesome. Those are some great goals. So what I want you guys to do after this, because you're not going to able to actually sit there right now because we're, you know, of course, pushing through a training, but I want you guys to definitely take a look at this and be specific. You guys, the only way that you're ever going to get to reaching a goal is to know exactly what you want and exactly what it's going to take. You have to break it down. Okay. So if you say you want to, to have 5,000 in sales or 6,000 in sales or 7,000 in sales, break that down and be specific. How many shows does that mean for you, right? Which means how many shows per week does that mean? Which means how many contacts per week do you have to do to get there? You know, on average, we used to say for every 10 contacts you made, and look, a contact is not just sending a message. A contact is actually having a two-way conversation with somebody. So for every 10 contacts you have, typically you will get one yes. Right now, it's probably more like 15 contacts, okay? Just because we have had so many people doing so many parties in the last year that it's gonna take a little bit more work. It may be more like 15 or 20. Everyone is gonna establish a personal average. And if you track it, if you're someone that tracks it, you look back at that contact log, you can actually see what your personal average is if you're a tracker, okay? So we started with mindset for a reason, okay? Why did I start with a mindset moment? Because your mindset directly controls these four things in business. Your mindset controls your belief, it controls your discipline, it controls your personal satisfaction as a consultant. And it also laser focus on knowledge, okay? Because if your heart and your mind are not in this game, are you going to attend trainings? Are you going to take DASH trainings? Are you going to do coaching calls? Probably not, right? Because if you're lagging in your belief and you're lagging in your discipline and you're lacking in your satisfaction as a consultant, the last thing you want to do is have a conversation with Becky. I mean, unless you're the one that needs a swift kick in the pants, right? Right, Yvonne? Yvonne's like, yes. Jackie's like, yes. <laughs> but I want you guys to know that mindset is such a powerful part of your business. What you tell yourself, yourself will believe. So what does discipline mean to you guys? What does discipline mean to you guys? Doing the work. 
doing the work consistently consistently doing the work anybody else have a different opinion well scheduling the work and making sure that it gets done instead of just uh thinking about it or talking about it absolutely yeah plan your work and work your plan right <laughs> it's one of my favorite lessons i ever learned anybody else Mm. Keep, keep your system going. A system with a routine, absolutely. All right. So with discipline, there are actually two forms of discipline. Um, one being self-discipline, which is the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses. The ability to pursue what one thinks is right, despite temptations to abandon it. And then you have entrepreneurial discipline, which simply put, as an entrepreneur, Self-discipline must be at the heart of your character. It must lead and define how you spend your time and the quality of your life. So what's the difference between the two? Is there a difference? Well, self-discipline is more of a mindset, getting the correct mindset which is then going to be the core of being a professional entrepreneur. Absolutely. Yeah. So these two kind of go hand in hand, right? The, they, the discipline is in both things. Like you have to have personal self-control and you also have to have that business mentality to help you get there. So here's kind of some of my discipline do's and don'ts. Okay. We're going to go through the list of do's first. So you definitely have to prioritize your time. How many of you guys raise your hand if you heard me this week tell you anything about guarding your time and how important your time is? I think everyone probably heard me say it. Setting boundaries. This is one I struggle with, okay? This is one that has gotten me in trouble because I want to be all things to all people, but I can't always do that. And so you have to learn how to set limitations and boundaries because your time is so important. Having a schedule, you definitely want to have a schedule. And here's the thing, you can have a schedule, but are you working your schedule and sticking to your schedule? Those of you guys that have been around a long time know when I was doing all cooking shows, right? Tiffany, what did I do when I had a cooking show cancel? book another one i well, i would try to book another one but during that normal oh, time yeah. i would be gone what did i do you would uh if, if you did get another booking uh, if it was like a last minute cancellation or whatever that time frame of when you would be at that party um like from driving from your house to getting back to your house you were working in your office absolutely and that's personal discipline right that's, I was already planning on being out of my home from two o'clock to six o'clock. My show canceled. I could have stayed in pajamas watching TV with my family and playing board games or doing something. But my family knows that my boundaries are when I'm going to be working, I'm working. And so when my show would cancel, I would stay home. I would come in my office. And that time I was generally supposed to be away for a cooking show. I was working. It was an automatic expectation. My husband knows it, my children know it. Because you have to, if you have a schedule, you have to work your schedule. You have to know what your weaknesses are. Does anyone have any weaknesses? I know I do. I, I'm like a squirrel. I get distracted very easily, right? And so I have to eliminate distractions from around me or I can't work. I just can't. Like last week, I was trying to work on the PowerPoint for last week's call upstairs where the TV's at. That didn't go very well until I finally was like, oh my gosh, I got to get away from the TV. It's distracting me, right? It took me like, you know, an extra hour and a half to make a PowerPoint that should have been done in 30 minutes because I kept like type, type, look, type, type, look, you know, getting distracted. And you have to create a plan and follow it. So many of us will spend time, we'll invest the time to make a plan for ourselves. But when the rubber meets the road, we stop following it. 
if you're going to commit to a plan, you have to stick to it. So some don'ts, like I said a couple minutes ago, don't try to be all things to all people. Okay. Stay dedicated to what's most important to you. You know, when I lost my job and decided to do Pamper Chef as my full-time job, that meant that, yes, my kids knew I had a job to do, that I would be working in my office, I would have hours of you know work, but it also meant I did that because I wanted to still be able to be a mom that I've never been able to be. Like, I wanted to still be dedicated. I still wanted to go to you know teacher conferences and do all the things that moms do that I never got the chance to do. So don't try to be all things to all people, like stick with what, what do you want from, you know, what do you want? We can have our cake and eat it too. You just have to figure out a way to make it happen. And you guys stop saying yes to everything, to everyone, every time. Anybody guilty of that? Yeah. Right. We try to be all things to all people. Don't think you won't make any mistakes. I have made, I mean, uh, if I had to write them on the wall in my office, my walls would be graffitied of how many mistakes I've made in the last 10 years. You will make mistakes, right? We will all make mistakes. It's whether you learn the lessons from those mistakes to help push you forward, right? Because the only time you fail is when you stop trying. Don't forget to reward yourself, okay? Um, you know, like if you're me, you don't need to reward yourself with an ice cream cone. That's probably not the best reward for me. But reward yourself in some way, right? Do you like to go get your nails done? Do you like to get a foot rub? Do you like, to, I don't know, what, whatever your thing is, maybe I don't need to know what it is, but reward yourself some way, okay? It's important and don't keep distractions around, okay? So if you're that squirrel like Becky and TV is a distraction for you, then you turn it off when you're working, okay? Because it's just gonna suck your brain cells from one spot that they should be to another that they shouldn't be. All right, so this was a book I read a long time ago, and it's one that's always kind of carried through with me. Um, it's called The Four Disciplines of Execution, and it's, and it's really about how you reach your goals, okay? Um, the, here's the information on the right-hand side for you guys if you're a book reader. And so discipline breaks down into four types when it comes to executing, and that's the discipline of focus, the discipline of leverage, the discipline of engagement, and the discipline of accountability. So we're gonna focus on what I think are the two most important for our type or style of business. So the discipline of focus, okay? So results can only be achieved when you are clear about what matters most when it comes to reaching your goals. When you're learning about focus, you have to narrow your focus to determine why this goal is important to you and how it's going to affect your life. Because, you know, if I asked you guys right now what your why is, why are you doing Pampered Chef? Who wants to tell me why they're doing Pampered Chef? Terry, what, why are you doing Pampered Chef? I need income. I need connection with other people. Okay. I need, I need, a, I need something that I'm working towards. Okay. And then my next question for you is how will that affect your life? How does it affect my life? Yeah. So let's it say it makes me feel like I have a purpose every day. Yeah, absolutely. Right. A purpose. It makes that goal even more important when you know this is my goal, but even more so, this is why I have that goal. Okay. So, so many of us are like, oh yeah, I'd like to make, you know, I'd like to make $2,000 a month. Right. We can throw any number out there that we want to throw out there, but why is it important that you're going to make $2,000 a month? Like, what purpose does that $2,000 a month serve for you? What, well, where would else. that, right, exactly. Where would that 2000, how would that affect your life? Because here's the thing about it. You can have a why, right? 
But if that why does not connect to you in a personal way, it's not going to resonate strong enough to keep you attached to it. It has to be something that literally makes you want to cry. When you think about the feeling of that moment when you finally accomplish that goal, that feeling that gets in the bottom of your stomach, that's the feeling that every time you think about your why, you should feel. So I know we all have lots of goals, right? When you're doing a business like this, it is really easy to come up with a list of goals, right? I want to be an executive director. I want to blah, 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 blah. I want to blah, 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 blah. How do you ever focus on multiple goals? You really can't. You, you need to pick the one that matters the most to you and develop your plan for that one goal. That lets you focus on that goal. You must also decide, because decide, we have to decide, right? Nobody else does that for you, but you. You have to decide what you are willing to set aside to accomplish that goal. Does that mean that you have to spend less time binge watching Madam Secretary? Okay, maybe. Does that mean you have to spend less time going out bar hopping? I don't know, whatever it is. Can you tell, like, I would really like to go bar hopping. But anyway, no, I'm just joking. Um, but you have to figure out, so those things that are holding you back, most of you guys would agree, last, time we last week we talked about time, right? Time is one of our biggest things that holds us back from achieving our goals, right? So you have to decide what is sucking your time away from you. Where is all that time going? If we all, can we all agree that we all have 24 hours every day? Every one of us, right? How is it possible that some people can achieve big, great things with the same amount of time, but you always feel like you're stuck? It's because sometimes we have things that are pulling us in the direction that we shouldn't be going. So what are those things that you have to decide to kind of pull back while you're working on your goal? You have to learn to say no. We hear no all the time, but you also have to learn to say no. And this is one of the things that I think is really important about focus is you cannot drive a car looking in the rear view mirror. You must focus on what's ahead of you, not what's behind you. So anything like we talked about last week, anything that happened in 2020 that was negative, leave it there. Don't bring it forward with you. That car is headed straight. It's not headed backwards. All right. Who has a BHAG? And if you don't know what a BHAG is, it's on your screen. It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. I want you guys to drop your BHAG in the chat for me. All right, let's see. Buy a new house. Ooh, I'd like that. Pay off two loans even better. So Terry's going into debt and Jackie's getting out of debt. I like it. <laughs> Retire early in North Carolina. I'm going to North Carolina with you, Tom. I love North Carolina. I want to retire there one day too. Pay off your house, pay off credit card and medical bills, pay off my car by the end of the year. I love that because Lisa, you were very intentional on when you wanted to pay it off. Pay off your car. Awesome. So it looks like we have a lot of like debt stuff, right? So stuff that we want to get rid of debt wise, which is really cool because, you know, you guys know how much you have left to pay on your car, right? How much are on your credit cards and what can you do with that knowledge? You can break it down, right? You can crunch that number down into, okay, this to pay this off within this many months or a year or two years. That means I need to make X amount of money per month, which means I need to have X amount of shows, which means I need to 
ask X amount of people. So Terry says, I don't have a mortgage now, so I will use the proceeds of this house to buy a new house. Well, that's good. No debt. I like it even better. Yes. If you've never done Dave Ramsey, do Dave Ramsey. I'm just saying. Love Dave Ramsey. All right. So to reach that BHAG, you must change your behavior. Okay. Simply put, if you want to achieve goals that you've never achieved before, you have to do things that you've never done before. Does that sound like, oh, Becky, really? Or does it sound like, wow, never thought about it that way? You know, anybody that's working really hard on a goal, they have to give up things, right? They have to have that focus. They have to have that dedication. They have to have that discipline. They have to have that belief, that determination, the blah, 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 blah. We'll keep going with adjectives, right? But what it all boils down to is that if I've been doing the same thing for the last 10 years of my business, which I'm talking about myself now, right? And it's only gotten me halfway to my goal, then what do I have to do this year to change it? What are the things that I haven't done yet to get me where I wanna go? And when I look at that, there's a lot of them that I need to change. All right, so let's talk about that other principle, the law of accountability. So when accountability only exists between you and your director, it's, a, its effect is limited. But when you find someone to partner with, there's a feeling of accountability to each other, okay? So people are always willing to work hard to avoid disappointing their boss, right? Nobody wants to disappoint their boss. That's never a pleasant thing. But they will work even harder to avoid dis or disappointing their team. Would you guys agree with that? If you guys were all working together on the same team and you had to go in front of your team and say, guys, you know what? I wasn't able to make my goal this month because X, Y, and Z happened. Would you feel worse about that telling all of your team or would you feel worse just telling Becky? Probably everybody, right? Because you count on each other. So again, one of my things that I love that I've always had is having an accountability partner. How many of you guys have an accountability partner? Drop it in the chat if you have one. I think having an accountability partner is what sometimes we don't know that we need, that we need. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Some of you guys, I love it. So Tiffany has one, Jackie has one, Tom has one, and it's his daughter, Kelly. I love it. Um, Terry has several, and for different reasons. I like that, Terry. You know what? I do too. I have a group of like six women that I meet with every Thursday morning at nine o'clock. They're my ones I form ideas with. We idea share, blah, blah, blah. And then I have my core group of two girls, Amanda and Carolyn, that will whoop my butt in check when I need it. Okay. So getting an accountability partner is something I recommend that you guys, if you don't have one, you need one. Okay. So you want someone who isn't scared of you or your antics, but cares enough about you to tell you the truth and will push you when you don't want to be pushed. And I'll tell you my newest, my newest accountability partner has become my office assistant, which AKA is my oldest daughter. Because when she comes over, if I'm still upstairs in pajamas drinking my second cup of coffee, which is typically what happens at 11 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, I'm watching Madam Secretary. She's like, mom, we need to go get to work. And I'm like, oh, we'll just watch the rest of this episode. Mom, we need to go to work. You have to have that person that if they love you, they're still willing to tell you the truth, okay? You don't want an accountability partner that's going to just tell you what you want to hear because that's not helping you to grow as a person or a business leader. Okay. You guys are all business leaders, right? You're all business owners and business leaders. So mindset wise, that's what we have to believe that we are. So you have to be willing to hold yourself accountable. And that is true discipline. So here are some ways you can hold that you can discipline yourself. You can evaluate your results every month because guess what? Numbers do not lie. I can tell myself, oh yeah, I did everything possible last month to earn that, you know, incentive. 
my shows were great. They were amazing. I just didn't have sales. Well, I had five shows, but I didn't get any bookings. When you go digging through every one of those excuses that you're telling yourself, you're going to see a lot, right? Maybe you pull it apart and say, you know what? I had a lot of shows, but you know what? If I'm being honest with myself, I didn't host coach like I should have. I host coached like I should have, but I didn't really participate in my party like I should have. All of those things that you go back and evaluate are hopefully going to help you stop what you're not doing and help you start what you should be doing. So I have always done this with myself and I know it's ridiculous. But every month, the beginning of the month, when I look backwards and I evaluate what my results were from the month before, I ask myself, would I hire Becky or would I fire Becky? Because again, you're a business owner. If I were the employee, would I be hired or fired? I know that sounds really harsh, but sometimes to get where you want to go, you have to be critical of what you're not doing. So I, I, another way that you can help discipline yourself is to schedule regular check-in meetings with your director, okay? They don't have to be painful, I promise. Like anyone that does coaching calls with me, we laugh a lot, right? We definitely do dig into your goals and I don't take your excuses, even though you try, right? <laughs> you try really hard, but we don't let it work. Um, but, you know, it's more about sometimes you just need that support. Like you just need someone to listen. And it's honestly, the best thing about it is that if you're not someone that can dig into the numbers or don't know where to start, I have them all in front of me that we can talk about, right? I can pull up every single one of you guys in every single month of your sales, of your bookings, of your everything. Because again, numbers don't lie. Ask for help when you're stuck. That's a really hard one. Does anyone have trouble asking for help? Who has trouble asking for help? I see, look, Lisa is honest enough. I love that. One of our directors is like, yep. That's me. And I love today. She was so truthful. Lisa, what, what were you wanting to do today? Come on, tell, tell us. Uh, Cause I was like, okay, we can hop on a call. You have to bear with me. I think the TV might be loud. Oh, um, yeah. When you posted that motivational thing this morning, I woke up this morning, like everything's wrong you know, I was down on myself, nothing's going right, blah, 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 poor me, whatever, I'm not doing this anymore. And I went, yeah, no, I don't think so. And I just <laughs> put on my big girl panties, pulled them all the way up and got to work with messages. So she gave herself a wedgie. She pulled yeah. them up so high. Yeah, I did. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa, I'm glad that you said that because <clears throat> as leaders, um, we're still consultants. And we still go through the same stuff that everybody else does. So don't think that just because we're in a leadership role that everything comes easy to us. Or we don't think about, you know, not working our business this day, you know, because something has happened. So we're, we're just like everybody else. We have to put mm -hmm. our foot to the pedal and grind it. Absolutely. You know, and, and to be truthful with you guys, you know how we've been doing these booking blitzes every single week for like, I don't know, probably eight weeks now, seven weeks, something like that. Do you guys know that, do you know why I continue doing those? Does anyone know why? Does it hold you accountable? Oh, ding, 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 ding. You're a winner. Yes, because I needed the accountability and how better to hold myself accountable, right? Than scheduling something that I really don't wanna be doing but I'm doing it anyway, because if I'm asking you guys to do something, then I darn well better be doing the same thing, right? I mean, that's how I've always looked at leadership. Leadership is, you know, if I'm willing to ask you to go clean a toilet, then I'm willing to clean a toilet myself. Not that I'm going to ask you to clean a toilet, but you know what I'm saying? So set a schedule and stick to it or take away your distractions. 
And we, I mentioned this one last week, and I know a couple of you guys, this one resonated with last week, is tie your commission to a bill. If you want true discipline in your business, attach a bill to your paycheck. Because I guarantee you, none of you would be willing to not pay your mortgage if that was your goal because you weren't working. I love, I love Terry's um, comment. Did you read it? Nope, I was getting ready to get in the chat. Uh, yeah, read, the, <laughs> read Terry's comment. That's when you call your accountability partners so they can talk you out of it and help you work through it. Yep, or they can pick your wedgie. I'm just saying. No, read, oh. read the one before it. Oh, I missed that one. I have fired myself several times. I'm really a great worker <laughs> once I get going, so I have rehired myself back. I like it. Yes, yeah, so you can definitely fire and rehire, right? But when you rehire that Terry, that Terry has to be willing to do the job she's being asked to do, right? Got to do the work. All right, so who has something they have done in the past few days in your business that you are proud of? Because I want to hear, I want some positivity. So what have you done that you are proud of in the last couple of days that you've done? Terry, what is it? I, I sent out two catalogs as a result of posting some cornbread that I made last week. And two people asked me for catalogs. I got them out. And today I got a $138 order as a result of that. So, Love it. So I'm proud that I actually got them in an envelope and got them to the post office so that they could get them. I have to follow up on the other one, but today I got a $138 order because of that. So absolutely. I'm pretty so, you, so you followed up and you followed through. Yes. Right? Yes. You know, we can do one action, but not do the other. And you're not going to get a result from it. Right. Right. Good job. Right. Who, else? Who else has something? Let's see something in the chat. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd my chat bar go? Oh, there it is. Uh, sent messages diligently and booked four parties. Ah, love it. Did customer care and potential March booking. Customer care. I love it. Because that's our focus on Friday. Customer care. Who else has something? I actually did follow-up messages from my December parties, which I... I haven't heard back from people yet, but I will find out or not find out, but see what tomorrow's results are. And I still have more parties to go through from December. Good deal. And Lisa says she sent messages today for customer care and bookings and booked one and have a potential other booking. Y'all, it's not just about sending booking messages, right? When we do the job that we're supposed to do, which is follow up with the customers that ordered us, ordered from us. That's a potential booking as well for you guys. Awesome sauce. All right, so celebrate your successes, no matter how big or small that they are, okay? Because all of them are gonna help you guys reach your goal. We all have lots of little wins and sometimes we forget to stop and say, wow, I just did that, right? And that little something that you just did is helping you along the path of reaching what your big goal is. Where we need to hold ourselves accountable to personal discipline, we also must reward ourselves for things like overcoming a fear. How many of you guys have overcome a fear that you've had in this last week? Just by something you've done in your business. Tom and Carrie, what'd you guys do that helped you overcome a fear? Well, instead of worrying about what people think of what we post on social media, just uh, stepping forward, stepping out of the comfort zone and post um, consistently posting instead of worrying about what people think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you know what, guys, like they don't control your paycheck, right? You do. I mean, they do when they when you're, you know, they're hosting a show for you They kind of have their your paycheck in their hands. Lisa, what was yours that you overcame? I already know what she's going to say. I went live in my party yesterday. Yay! Now I knew you went live on the wolf pack, but I didn't know you went live in your party, which is even more exciting. You got over that fear, right? Yeah, and, and the more that you do that, the easier it's going to get, right? Anybody else have a fear that they overcame this week? Or something that makes them feel uncomfortable? No? 
Okay. So reward yourselves when you make more contacts than normal. So who's made more contacts this week than normal? Lisa did. Tiffany did. I know Erin Joy did. I, say I did. I know. <laughs> she told me earlier. I'm proud of her for that. Anybody else made more contacts than normal this week? Jackie did. Mike better get with it. <laughs> Who hit a milestone in their business? Did you hit a small milestone this week at all? I got a referral from a past coach today. I That's love a milestone for me. I got a referral because she loves me. I love her. And I've never met this person face to face. Yeah. So the biggest compliment that any customer will ever pay to you is when they refer a friend. Okay. That is the biggest compliment anybody will ever pay for you, pay to you. I think there's something in the chat. Let me look. All right. Let's see. What do we have? Uh, Gail, she sent out host coaching messages and she got a new consultant. You guys, you know, what's funny about Gail sailing, saying that? Because I remember like a year ago, Gail was like, I'm not recruiting, have no interest in recruiting, just not on my radar. And now Gail's recruiting like a machine and I love it. Who has been sticking to their schedule? Oh, Terry's head went. <laughs> Anyone stuck to a schedule? Well, I would say uh, we have. Uh, Carrie's been spending pretty much every night uh, sending out messages and then. <laughs> Even though I work <laughs> 10 to 12 hours a, a day, uh, throughout my day, I have a lot of blank time yeah. so take time and use that to do the social media stuff. Good deal. And she's in Facebook jail now because of all those messages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's okay. It's okay. So you guys see what I'm saying? Like, don't find all of the things that you haven't done right or the things that you haven't quite accomplished. Find those little things that you have done. Because if you dig deep enough, you're going to find something that you can be proud of for the week. And so I would challenge you guys at the end of the week, like I told you to evaluate your month, right? Evaluate every week to say, where did I grow? You know, how did I grow? Did I push myself outside of that comfort zone at all this week? Because those are the things that over time you're going to develop and turn into a habit for yourself. And those positive habits are what is going to give you the results that you need for your business. So, so I, before, wait, before you go on, um, one thing that I, uh, as far as out of comfort zone, um, I wanted to pipe in, but I couldn't. Um, I sent out for my January host, um, like the, in the host coaching, the two week or one week message. And I did that purposely so that um, they could get a jump start on sending out messages. So if they get orders in ahead of time, it, you know, still counts towards the party, even though the party didn't start. And I have for two hosts that actually um, did what I had asked, um, almost $200 in sales for them. Awesome. And Colleen, I see she dropped in the chat for us. She has two new potential recruits that she'll be talking to. And that is four potentials just this week, you guys. So here's a little shameless plug and a shameless reminder that when you have potential recruits, make sure you put them into our when, when the opportunity knocks Wolfpack group that we have all of the recruit leads in because we will have another opportunity event coming um, is it next week or the week after? I can't remember. I think it's the week after. It's the it's, 21st. Yeah, it's the first. We're doing them the first Sunday and the third Thursday of the okay. month. So um, so we will have another event coming. So make sure all those potentials, especially this month with that $20 kit, are in that group for us. Okay? And if you're working with someone and you don't know how to answer questions, three-way chat with a director group message put put one of your directors and that potential and you into a group chat and let us help you with that potential okay so we're going to kind of wrap up with one of my favorite quotes from john maxwell and that is small disciplines repeated with consistency every day lead to great achievements gained slowly over time so does anyone have any questions at all
No? All right. So like last week, I issued a challenge to you guys, right? What did you guys have to do after the meeting last week? You had to go post something on the Wolfpack, right? Does anyone remember what it was? <laughs> Everybody's I, I, like, think, I think they all did it. They just can't remember what they did. <laughs> is that a sign of age, of lack of sleep, <laughs> of lack of coffee? All the above. <laughs> just about to say that. <laughs> all of the above. I remember. What was it, Terry? We had to post something that we believe about ourselves. I, 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 I believe I can win a trip to Puerto Rico. I think that's what I wrote down. So I'm going to change your language. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> we don't win trips. We earn trips. We earn them. Yes. We earn, we them. earn those trips for sure. So this week, your challenge. I'm not sure what I, I really wrote, but I knew it was about that. <laughs> We're going to make you guys stretch a little while and get uncomfortable for about 2.5 seconds. Okay. It's going to be painful when you do it. But after you can just say, okay, I'm done. So that triangle that we started earlier, right? The one I told you, you're going to have to take time and kind of finish that triangle, right? To really dig and kind of really like be specific. I want you guys to finish your triangle and I want you guys to post a picture of it on the Wolfpack. Hashtag, I believe. Okay. So post your triangle. Because. Like I've told you before, and I'll keep telling you every week, I will keep believing in you until you believe in you. But what I would also do is once you get that triangle done, put that triangle right in your workspace so that you can see it as you're working. Let that keep you centered and focused, right? Because again, it'll help your mindset. When you have that moment of doubt in your head, that's like, hey, Mike, you really don't want to send these messages right now. It's Jackie's turn. And Jackie looks at you and says, hey, Mike, get it done. And then Mike can say, okay, I'm going to look at the triangle. <laughs> no, but really it'll help motivate you guys to keep you centered. When you have those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? It'll help you remember why you are. All right. Well, it is eight o'clock, my friends. Does anyone have any questions? Where's the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any. If I did, that wouldn't be good because I love pizza and especially at like eight o'clock at night. It's my moment of weakness. All right, my friends. Well, on to week three. Who remembers what week three is going to be? Like, I love everybody's like, let me get my notebook. <laughs> well. Will? Mm -hmm. Yes. The question is, will you show up again next week? Oh, you like that pun. I got puns all day. I'll be here all night. I'm just joking. All right, you guys. Thank you again for joining us. Um, I appreciate it. And if you guys are watching this on replay, make sure to post your triangles. And y'all have a good evening. Good night. Good night.